Hey guys, so today I'm here to do a tag video. And I saw this tag uh, created by a YouTuber that goes by the name of Kaylee Bout. Boat? Kaylee, how do you say her last name? But it is called the Another Palette Tag because she couldn't really come up with another name for it because it was just another palette tag. But I like the questions that she included. So I thought I would do it because I got nothing else to do today. <laughs> Let's, uh, let's, let's get in the question, shall we? First question is your first palette. Now, my first palette I do not own anymore because my sister stole it from me. And that was the Coastal Scents 80, 180. It was like the one that was all the colors. It had like black and browns and neutrals all the way to like rainbow, light yellows. Like it was, it was a whole spectrum of colors. I used it on my old channel when I first started doing makeup videos. So if you want to see that palette, here's a little picture of it. I did use it. I did use it quite a lot, but soon thereafter I invested in other eyeshadow palettes, but it was like $20 for like a hundred colors or so. So yeah, that was a fun one. It was a lot. It was a lot of colors. <laughs> they weren't the greatest quality, but like it's $20. I don't know what to do. Number two is your most recent purchase. And that would be the Kat Von D Pastel Goth Palette. Now I bought this a few months ago. I don't even remember. Um, I did a tutorial with it on my channel. I'll post a link to that in a card up here. But um, I like this palette. It's tiny. It's compact. I love the design of it. I appreciate that. And it's like the same color as my hair right now. It's not necessarily the most versatile palette, but it's really fun when I want to have bright colors without being like crazy bright colors. Like if I'm wearing like a dark lipstick and like eyeliner and I want to do like a colorful look, this won't like overdo the color, you know, cause it's like desaturated and stuff. I like it and I like the mirror that goes all the way across and it's got like a little like drippy thing going on. Number three is a question that deals with regrets but not necessarily a palette I regret buying but a palette I regret missing out on. And that is really any sugar pill palette but the sugar pill pro palette that came out for like this amount of time. Oh like I own two sugar pill eyeshadows that's it but I like marvel and I like drool at sugar pill eyeshadows and like the looks that people create with them but I like never invested in anything besides a white color and a yellow color. Color. The Pro Palette, mm, I just, I want it. Sugar Pill eyeshadows are one of those things that I, like, I would love to invest in because of how much value is in it, but I don't do colorful eyeshadow enough to see myself like using up like a huge pan of like bright red eyeshadow, although red lately I have been using more of, but like bright blue or bright green, but getting the palette all in one just to like own, ugh, it would've been so pretty. I wish, I wish it was here. Question number four is a palette that makes you happy to look at it. Now, this isn't an eyeshadow palette, but it's still a palette that I can put on my eyes. This is the Anastasia Moonchild Glow Kit. The one thing I hate about this palette, like the one thing, like the colors, fucking gorgeous, right? Beautiful highlighters, I can put them on my eyes, I can put them on my cheeks, I can put them in the center of my lips. But the fact that there's no mirror, like come on. Honestly, if a palette doesn't have a mirror, it should have a clear top so you can just see it. Cause like you would think when you open up a palette like this, ooh yeah, mirror, no. But the colors are gorgeous. They make me so happy. Cause there's like a green highlighter, like, like a green highlighter. I love it. And like Anastasia, like, girl, you doing it right. You doing it right. So good. Question five is a palette that you changed your mind about. Now this could be taken from like the idea of something that you liked when you first got it and now you don't like it or something that you didn't like when you first got it and now you like it. This is the Urban Decay Vice One palette. Now this is the like rubberized one that came out probably like six years ago, honestly, such a long time ago. It's kind of gross because of how rubberized it is. It attracts everything. It feels gross on the hands. This is when I was first trying to invest in like higher quality eyeshadows. Like the only eyeshadow palette I think I had besides this one was like the Naked One palette and then that Coastal Sense thing. This uh, palette is just, it just doesn't speak to me. It's so cool. When I first saw it, I was like, oh, it's got some fun bright colors, it's got some blues, it's got some greens, it's got bright pink. But the problem with this palette is that it's so big. The mirror's nice, it's a nice mirror. I can use it when I'm just like sitting up. 
but it's too big. While it looks like there's a variety of shades, there's really not that huge of a variety of shades. There's a lot of like cool kind of purples. There's a lot of chunky glitter in it. It just doesn't speak to me. And when I first bought it, I was like, ooh, bright colors, fun. It was just like, there were super chunky glitters. There was really pretty shimmery ones. Like Penny Lane is a gorgeous color. But then there was like lame colors like Echo Beach, which was like a sand color that like barely had any shimmer in it. I don't know. I don't like it. And when I first bought it, I was kind of obsessed with it because I really didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> Question number six is a palette that surprised you. This is the Anastasia Artist Palette, and I've used this so much, I'm close to hitting pan. But what I love about this palette is that it's even smaller than the Modern Renaissance Palette. It's even smaller than the Pastel Goth Palette from Kat Von D. It's so tiny, but it has the kind of colors that I use, and then the colors that I want to use more. Cause like, Dusty Rose is like my go-to every day. And then Aubergine I love using in the crease. And then when I wanna go like crazy brights, I got Fresh and Orangey Fancy and Punch Fuchsia. Like, I've got bright colors that I wanna use, but then I've also got neutrals that I actually use all the time anyway. So it's perfect for travel. It's got a little brush holder here if you want to put a brush in there. I lost the brush that came with it, but I didn't think I was gonna like it as much as I do, but I really like it. Question seven is a palette that inspires you most. And this was very difficult for me to uh, decide what to include, but um, I'm going to have to say the Urban Decay Electric Palette. This palette is not one that I can only use to make a, a look. Like, if I use this, I have to use other shadows from other palettes. When I look at it, it's just like, um, okay, what do I want to do today? I could do bright reds. I can do blues with like browns in the crease. I can do like a bright ass green color. I did like a chartreuse eyeshadow look in this video. I'll post a link up here. But I, it's just, there's so much to look at and so many colors to be like, I'm bored today. I want to put pink on my eyes. Like, it's, it's, it's fun. It's a great way to just get out of my comfort zone because I usually go for like warm neutrals. This is just, it's great. I think it's completely gone. I think it's discontinued, unfortunately. Urban Decay, can you stop doing that? Can you stop making palettes that are good and then discontinue them? Question eight is a palette that is on my wish list. Now, the Urban Decay, Naked Heat. Do I need it? No. Do I want it? Yes. <laughs> I've been seeing the swatches and I've seen a couple people do makeup tutorials with it who got it before it officially released and I'm just, <sighs> I want it. I want it. The packaging is beautiful. It reminds me of the electric palette in that it just that really nice like hard plastic cover and it's just shimmery and pretty and the colors I'm obsessed with. Like I love warm neutrals, clearly. I have green eyes. It just looks good on my eyes. <laughs> Like, I haven't been excited about a naked, like, I got naked one. I got naked one and that was it. Like, that's the only naked palette I've ever gotten. That was it. But I want this one. I want it. And then the last question is your no fail palette. Now, this was hard to narrow down, so I didn't, um, <laughs> including two different ones. Uh, the first is the Kat Von D Shade and Light Eye Palette. This thing, I fit pan here, mainly because I used it as a cheek contour for a while. But this palette, it just, the fact that it's organized so perfectly makes me so just happy as like, as like a graphic designer and as somebody who like likes things to be organized in a way that makes sense. This makes me so happy. It's a bit bigger, but it does come with a mirror, so I like it. If I don't wanna go crazy with an eye look, I can do a simple neutral eye. If I wanna go crazy, I can do like a red and black smoky eye. Like, it's just, it's all matte. The only thing, the only thing that doesn't make this palette perfect, uh, the fact that it's not the modern Renaissance palette from Anastasia. I use this thing all the time. The brush is great, the shadows, are perfection. It took a little bit of getting used to how much fallout there was with the darker colors, but like I've figured it out. I've hit pan on tempura. I'm very close to hitting pan on vermeer. Burnt orange, I'm close to. Cypress umber, I'm close. Like it's perfect. You can you can do like smoky eyes like this, which I used burnt orange, red ochre, realgar, cypress umber, and then tempura 
as my brow highlight and it's great, it's perfect. Or if I just wanna do like a simple kind of warmy neutral, I can do raw sienna and burnt orange all over the lid and I'm good and I'm fine. Like warm taupe, Anastasia, you really know who I am? And I'm so happy that my boyfriend got me this for Christmas. I love the fact that it's got mostly mattes and like very satiny mattes and then just a couple of shimmer colors. Tempura is like a perfect satin, a little bit shimmery, but not like overly glittery. But then you've got Primavera and Vermeer and it's just, it's just, it's... Literally the only ones that have shimmer are Tempura, Vermeer, Primavera, and Antique Bronze. Everything else is matte and that's all you need. I just wish that this wasn't so like prone to getting like fuzz on it. And I'm very excited about the sister palette that's supposed to come out in the fall, like what? Those are all the questions. Um, I quite liked the tag. So if you want to do this tag, consider yourself tagged. If you don't, you don't have to. Song of the day is Ghost Town by my goodness, because their episode of Band of Seattle literally airs on Saturday and their album just came out and the vinyl is a pink tie-dye vinyl. It's like a millennial pink, like what? I'm obsessed with it. But Ghost Town is really awesome. It's got like this really kind of like trap feel to it, but still like reverby rock and roll. Like I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. My goodness, Ghost Town, Song of the Day. Do it, coming back with Song of the Day, strong. Let me know if you guys have any of these palettes, what your thoughts are, what your favorite palette is, one that you think I should try. If there's one that's very similar to the sugar pill, but there's really not. If you haven't subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. That would be lovely. And if you have, hit the little bell icon. That way you can get notified every single time I upload a video. And then check out my previous video, my little thoughts from Sasquatch. Check it out. I love making these videos and uh, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.